Sarah Jane Smith is one of the Doctor's most notable and popular companions. When you think of companions, she always comes to mind. She might not be everybody's favourite, but there's no doubt she's one of the most iconic. From a curious young journalist, Sarah Jane went on to meet more Doctors than any other companion. Sarah Jane met each of the first five Doctors as well as 10 and 11, and went on to save in the world herself with her own attic crew in the Sarah Jane Adventures. She had an amazing life from start to finish and played an important part in the Doctors also, with her own huge influence in preserving the safety of planet Earth. Let's have a look back on Sarah's wonderful life and speculate how it ended, or how maybe it hasn't, as she still could very much be out there travelling. Regardless, this is the story of Sarah Jane Smith. There are a few different accounts surrounding Sarah Jane's birth, but as seen in The Temptation of Sarah Jane Smith, she was born in the village of Foxgrove in May 1951. When she was only a couple of months old, she was abandoned by her parents, Barbara and Eddie Smith, who left her in a pram and drove off in their car to protect the earth from the trickster. Shortly after driving away, Sarah's parents collided with a tractor and were killed in the tragic accident. It's unclear what happened to Sarah in the months that followed the loss of her parents, but all she had left to remember them by was a picture of her parents with a message written from her mother to her father with the words, Mr. Smith, I need you. What we do know is Sarah was raised by her aunt Lavinia and when she was around five years old, she began to develop a fear of clowns. A clown puppet hung in her bedroom and used to stare down at her when she slept and move around by itself. She later learnt that the clown was manipulated by the Pied Piper, with this fear staying with her her entire life. In terms of Sarah's earlier life, there are a number of short stories and novels which give us a few glimpses as to what happened. In November 1963, Sarah went on a day trip to London with her aunt, and while there she explored a junkyard where she witnessed a young girl entering a strange blue box. This could arguably be the beginning of her being destined to one day enter that very blue box herself. Sarah had a mixed time in school, exploring multiple hobbies and interests, but not always following the rules. She attended the Caterham School of Girls, which was a strict and reputable school where Sarah was a bit of a rebel at times. In the beginning, she broke each and every rule which she believed was pointless, as she relentlessly followed her own beliefs and aspirations. She fenced for her local school team, and was particularly talented at hockey, and was renowned for her great communication skills. It was in school where she decided that she would become either an explorer, a scientist, or a journalist. She wanted to see and experience everything that the world had to offer, and she would not stop until she'd done just that. In 1964, she was on a school outing with her best friend Andrea Yates, who tragically slipped off of a pier to her death. The trickster manipulated this event by creating an alternative timeline to which it was Sarah who lost her life in this accident. This would of course have a terrible impact on the future of Earth in that timeline. In the normal timeline, this experience though taught Sarah the importance of life and how vital she was to it, as she never forgot her best friend Andrea. She began studying at Liverpool University when she was 18, and began doorstepping at 19, and while her aunt was away in the US, Sarah posed as her so she could infiltrate a unit facility, where numerous scientists had previously gone missing. This is where she met Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart and the Doctor, who initially introduced himself under the alias John Smith. To begin with, the Doctor brushed Sarah Jane aside and didn't take her seriously, 
but once Sarah took the initiative upon herself, the Doctor revealed his true identity, and when left alone, Sarah curiously peered in to the Doctor's strange police box, which would reveal a whole new universe to her that would change her life forever. She hid within the TARDIS while the Doctor, unaware that she was there, flew back into the 13th century to investigate the missing scientists. This led to Sarah, who at first was sceptical of the situation, to be caught up in the events surrounding Iron men and Commander Lynx. At first, she blamed the Doctor for the disappearing scientists, but would eventually assist him in defeating the Suntaran before returning to Earth safely. Sarah's life was changed forever, and alongside the Doctor and Unit, she helped them battle the invasion of the dinosaurs, she defeated the Ice Warriors and the Daleks along the way, but her time with the Third Doctor was quickly coming to an end. Sarah investigated a Buddhist meditation centre at the request of Mike Yates, who at the time was trying to redeem himself following his previous betrayal of Unit, and during her investigation she was transported to Metabilis 3, where she fell under the control of the Eight Legs and her human servants. Sarah did escape the Queen's control after staring into a Metabilis crystal, but the Third Doctor wasn't so lucky, as his body was riddled by deadly radiation. Sarah and the Brig waited for three weeks for the Doctor's return as his TARDIS got lost in the Time Vortex, and once he did return, Sarah believed that the Doctor was dead, but with the support of the Brig she witnessed him regenerate into his fourth incarnation, one that she would become synonymous alongside. Sarah, as well as Harry Sullivan, travelled with the Fourth Doctor, helping him fight a giant robot, the Zygons, the Cybermen, and a Suntaran once again. But one of her most iconic trips was when she joined the Doctor during their trip to Skaro, to the very beginning of the Daleks' creation. Here she witnessed the Doctor face one of his most difficult decisions, as he was faced with the opportunity to rid the Daleks from the universe once and for all while committing genocide at the same time. She was alongside the Doctor during some of his most infamous trips as well, as together they battled Morbius, the Crinoids, and the evil Sutek. But despite Sarah being alongside him in some of the most treacherous of places, facing some of the most dangerous villains, it was when home came calling for the Doctor that Sarah had to be let go. When Gallifrey came calling and the Doctor knew he had to return home, he had to part with Sarah Jane, as he simply couldn't take her with him. The two shared a lovely moment before Sarah departed the TARDIS, as she asked the Doctor to never forget her, with the Doctor returning the favour, asking Sarah to never forget him. Sarah left the Doctor with both believing that this might be the final time that they'd ever see each other again. But instead of this being the end of Sarah's journey, it was only the beginning. In 1981, Sarah spent Christmas at her aunt's new home in Gloucestershire, where a crate had previously been delivered by the Doctor after Sarah had moved away. When she arrived at her aunt's new home, she discovered that her aunt had left for an American lecture tour. And here is where Sarah discovered the crate that was left by the Doctor. She opened the crate, revealing that the Doctor's gift was K9. And this was when Sarah's and K9's battle against evil and their quest to protect the people of Earth began. One morning, a few years later, when leaving to catch a bus, K9 sensed danger and urged Sarah to not leave and stay at home. And his senses proved to be right. Sarah was captured by the time scoop, which transported her to the death zone on Gallifrey, where she was quickly reunited with the third doctor. He wasn't the only doctor that she was reunited with, though, as she also went on to meet the first, second, and fifth doctors, respectively. After Sarah, the doctors, and their fellow companions defeated Barusa, Rassilon sent them back to Earth as Sarah's brief reunion with the doctor came to an end. 
Sarah resumed her career as a journalist during the rest of the 80s and the 90s, working alongside the Brigadier briefly in 1995 to defeat the Great Intelligence, who at the time had possessed another of the Doctor's previous companions, Victoria. At the turn of the millennium, Sarah lost her auntie and uncle, who'd both been a huge part of her upbringing following the death of her parents, and this led to a turning point in Sarah's life, as she chose to dedicate her time to not only journalism, but to protect the Earth in her own way. As the Earth began to be visited and be under threat from alien incursion more frequently than it had been before, Sarah opted to go about her business under the radar, as she believed in a different approach to the likes of Unit and Torchwood, and her inheritance from her late aunt allowed her the freedom and the resources to truly dedicate her life to this. At some point, Sarah moved to 13 Bannerman Road, where she was able to establish her own little secret headquarters, especially in the attic. In 2006, Sarah investigated some suspicious activity at Defry Vale High School, where a number of teachers had all weirdly been replaced at the same time. When pausing as an innocent journalist, simply looking for her next story, Sarah met the substitute physics teacher, John Smith, who shared the same name to which her old friend would use as his human alias. When infiltrating the school later that night, Sarah was to discover that it was more than just a coincidence that she'd bumped in to a certain John Smith earlier that day. In a truly breathtaking moment, decades after seeing the Doctor for what she thought would be the final time, Sarah came face to face with the TARDIS once again. And in a state of shock, she backed away, knowing that she was in the presence of the Doctor, for the first time since he'd wrongly dropped her off in Aberdeen. She turned around and instantly knew it was him. The iconic pair were reunited once again, and after a brief catch-up, were hand in hand on the run like they'd never been away from one another. Despite early friction between the two, Sarah, along with Rose, Mickey, the Doctor and K-9 defeated the Krillitane, with K-9 seemingly sacrificing himself at the end. The Doctor did ask Sarah to join him in the TARDIS like the old days, but Sarah had her own responsibilities now, and she politely declined. This time, the Doctor did say goodbye, as he surprised Sarah with a repaired and optimised version of K-9. Both Sarah and the Doctor went their separate ways again, but it wouldn't be the last time that they'd see each other. Far from it. Sarah gained a reputation of being a strange, mad and unsociable woman by her neighbours, as she understandably kept herself and her life in secret. This was until her new neighbour, Maria Jackson, snuck into Sarah's garden and witnessed her confronting an alien. Maria's suspicions surrounding Sarah were validated when she ran into her while investigating the Bubble Shock factory. Together, they rescued the Bane's son, who Sarah would later name Luke, as her secret life of alien crime came out in the open. Sarah adopted Luke as her own and helped him come to grips with human life as Sarah, Maria, Luke and later Clyde Langer formed the Attic Crew and went on to protect Earth from their small attic in Ealing. The following year, on what seemed like a normal cold spring evening, the Earth was shaken and moved to a different point in the universe. And with planets appearing in the sky, a strange message was received by Mr Smith a message which would shake Sarah to her core. The incoming transmission was the Daleks, as they began their latest invasion of Earth. Knowing the severity of the situation, Sarah left Luke at home and went straight out looking for the Doctor. In the process, she ran into a number of Daleks who were about to exterminate her, but luckily Sarah was saved by the returning Jackie Tyler and Mickey Smith, who she hadn't seen since they battled the Krillitane. 
Sarah joined the Doctor and the rest of his companions on the Dalek Crucible and came face to face with Davros for the first time since their genesis at the very beginning. And despite threatening the Daleks with a warp star, they were ultimately defeated by the Doctor, Donna. Sarah helped the Doctor tour the Earth home before once again wishing the Doctor well as she headed back home to her son, Luke. Sarah returned to her attic crew as the foursome continued to protect the Earth. Sarah tackled her lifelong fear of clowns as well as battling the last Suntarin, an adventure which was very reminiscent of the one she had with Thor and Harry in her earlier life. They fought the Bane once again with the help of the Brigadier, as well as the Trickster too, which sent Sarah back to her childhood where she learnt the fate of her parents. The group also said farewell to Maria, who moved away to the US with her father. The group did remain a four, however, with Rani joining them in the place of Maria. Since taking her own part in saving the Earth, Sarah would always stumble into the Doctor's world. But this time, it was the Doctor that had to intervene in hers. Despite living a very secluded life, only sharing it with Luke, Rani, Clyde and Maria, Sarah began seeing Peter Dalton, a seemingly innocent guy who Sarah instantly thought she could trust. Not only did she randomly fall in love with Peter, but Sarah also completely U-turned on her passion and dedication for saving the Earth practically shutting down Mr. Smith and the attic, saying goodbye to her previous life overnight. This rightly caused suspicions among Clyde, Luke and Rani, who knew something was awry. And their suspicions proved right. Within weeks of the engagement, there was the wedding, and all Sarah needed to do was say, I do, to Peter, and the trickster would have his grip on the world. As the trickster's plan was about to come to fruition, the sound of the TARDIS could be heard as the Doctor came barging in, urging them to stop this wedding now. Before the Doctor could be reunited with Sarah, the trickster split them both in separate seconds, with the hopes that Sarah could still be tempted to say, I do. But luckily, Sarah came to the realisation that she'd been brainwashed by the trickster into falling in love with Peter like she did although her feelings for him were true. Sarah had to choose between the man she did come to love or the world she'd spent so long saving. And luckily for the planet, she had to let Peter go to defeat the trickster once again. After the dust had settled, the Doctor returned and landed his TARDIS in the attic. The crew got to see the inside of the TARDIS for the very first time, before leaving the Doctor and Sarah alone. The pair shared a lovely moment together, very reminiscent from the Hand of Fear. As Sarah left the Doctor behind, like he did in his fourth incarnation, he urged Sarah to never forget him. It's not known where this exactly fell in the Tenth Doctor's timeline, but assuming that this was after he was told that his song was ending soon, it's clear that the Tenth Doctor knew this was the final time he would properly spend with Sarah Jane. Sarah left the TARDIS and the Tenth Doctor alone, not knowing that their time together was slowly coming to an end. A few short months later, Luke was carelessly crossing Bannerman Road and would have potentially been run down by a car. At the last second, he was saved by a strange man in a long brown coat. When realizing who had saved him, he ran straight to his mum to tell her that it was the doctor. And at first, Sarah was joyous that the doctor had returned to see them once again. But within seconds of laying her eyes on him, she knew. She just knew. As the Tenth Doctor entered the TARDIS, he looked back to Sarah with nothing but a wave and a slight smile. And knowing him so well, Sarah knew deep down that the Tenth Doctor hadn't appeared randomly by sheer coincidence, 
or that he'd stopped by to save Sarah and the world from another huge threat. He'd in fact returned to protect her and Luke and to bid goodbye to them for the final time in his life. Sarah knew the Doctor well enough to read his thoughts and feelings, no matter what the incarnation. But after the Tenth Doctor had left, she let out a huge smile, maybe knowing deep down that they would indeed meet again, albeit for the final time. The following year, Sarah would bid farewell to her son Luke, who went off to study at university very much like his mother did before him. And she also received the news that she simply could not believe. Unit forces visited Sarah's home and informed Sarah, Rani and Clyde that the Doctor had died and that the Shan Sheath had found his body and brought it back to Earth for a ceremony. Sarah headed to Unit Base beneath Mount Snowden and was joined by fellow former companion Joe Grant. But the pair were sceptical that the Doctor had been killed due to his ability to regenerate. Whether these suspicions were down to curiosity or denial, they were right to be unsure. It was revealed that it was all a rue from the Shan Sheath who wanted to extract the memories of the TARDIS key from Sarah and Joe, once they'd gathered them together in the same place. The memory weave that the Shan Sheath used began to be overwhelmed and self-destruct exploding and killing them in the process. The Doctor, Joe and the Attic crew escaped after Sarah and Joe hid in the Doctor's coffin, and they all headed back to the Attic in the Doctor's TARDIS. The three of them shared one final moment, before Joe headed back to the Amazon and Sarah back to the Attic. The two of them asked the Doctor that if he were to ever one day die, would they know? Would they feel it? And the Doctor could only reassure them that if that day ever came, the whole universe might just show up. From what we know, this meeting between the Doctor and Sarah Jane would be their last. Sarah continued fighting on in the honour of the Doctor while he travelled the universe, with Sarah always in the back of his mind no doubt. But unknown to the two of them, this was to be the final time that they would see one another. Or was it? The Attic crew would continue on, saving the world in their own small way. And they were even joined by Skye, an alien baby who appeared on Sarah Jane's doorstep, who she would go on to adopt. But, in terms of seeing their adventures, that was coming to an end. After the man who never was, we would never see Sarah Jane again. And for years, the whereabouts of the Attic crew were unknown. We were to believe that they were still out there, protecting the little man, defeating aliens, all from their little attic in Bannerman Road. And we were to assume that their adventures would go on forever. And I guess that was true until we all had to bid farewell to Sarah Jane. Sarah waited until the crew were out of the country until she passed away to save them any pain. And in April 2020, on a bright, cold spring day, all of Sarah's closest friends and those that she'd classed as family gathered to say their final goodbyes. The reception was full of people who'd gathered in the hall, the corridors, and even outside. And all of them were here to remember their late friend, Sarah Jane. Kate Lethbridge-Stewart paid her respects, along with other members of UNIT. Tegan and Nissa came from Australia to pay their respects, as did Ben and Polly from India, Ian and Barbara from Cambridge, as well as Martha and Mickey, and their son, August. Dodo, Liz Shaw, Victoria and Ace were also there in attendance, as was Captain Jack Harkness, with Maria and her dad attending via a video call. 
The many extraordinary people all mingled and shared their tales, love and memories of Sarah Jane and the amazing life that she lived. The family Smith, they deemed themselves, as the group would vow to meet up once a year, every year, in honour of Sarah Jane Smith. After a day of celebrating the great life that she led, the family Smith went off in their opposite directions. Ace took K9 with her, only leaving Luke, Clyde and Rani left. Luke drove them back to Bannerman Road, with Luke and Clyde reminiscing about Sarah Jane, while Rani was staying rather quiet. They closed down Mr Smith, who Sarah wished to be folded away, like with the rest of the attic so it could wait for its new owner. Luke left to continue his life with Sanjay, Clyde left to continue his movie career, but Rani stayed behind. Before she folded Mr Smith away, she theorised that maybe Sarah Jane isn't dead, and that maybe at the very end the Doctor came back for her. He came back for Sarah Jane for one final trip. Whether it was a handsome, young, dashing Time Lord in a tight blue suit and a long brown coat, or a tall, bug-eyed Time Lord with a big glowing grin and a multicoloured scarf, maybe the Doctor did come back for his Sarah Jane. But if not, maybe the Doctor was there that day. When Family Smith gathered, maybe the Doctor did attend the funeral. They might not have recognised the Doctor, but what if, what if, from a distance, a quiet, silent and undistinct woman watched on, paying her own respects to her old friend, the friend she never got to say goodbye to. This woman sits at the back, she never speaks, she doesn't shed a tear, and she goes completely unnoticed. But maybe, just maybe, she was always there, and remains to be there every year, paying her own respects to her, Sarah Jane. No matter what you believe, Sarah Jane Smith had a life and a story like no other. From a curious, persistent young journalist to a woman who was imperative in the protection of planet Earth, Sarah Jane left her mark and will go down as a legend within the Doctor Who universe, and like the incredible woman who portrayed her, will never be forgotten. So then guys, that is the amazing story of Sarah Jane Smith. And if you've enjoyed this, please do hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you are new to the series, there are six other episodes of the story of here on the channel, which you can sink your teeth into. As always, comment in the section below your thoughts on this video and follow us across all the social medias to keep up to date with everything that we are doing here on The Who Addicts. You can also donate to the channel and support us over on Patreon and visit our website for much more. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.